So now we arrive to the last section of this module in which I will try to answer a common clinical question that patients or their families may ask about what exactly can I do to prevent or slow down my cognitive decline as I age. So here's a list of the stuff that you can do that medical research have proven to prevent, delay, or slow down the progression of cognitive decline in older adults. These include maintaining physical exercise for at least 150 minutes per week, optimizing cognitive and social activity as much as tolerated, treatment of medical risk factors such as hypertension and hyperglycemia, smoking cessation, and minimizing alcohol use as much as possible. On the other hand, items on this list do not have enough evidence at this point that they prevent, slow, or delay the progression of cognitive decline. These include vitamins without any evidence of deficiency, estrogen replacement therapy, non-steroidals anti-inflammatory drugs, or cholinesterase inhibitors. And this is a list of some items that may help with cognitive decline in older adults, but they require more evidence to back them up. These include consuming Mediterranean diet, or the MIND diet, which is a mix between Mediterranean and DASH diet, vitamin E and omega-3 fatty acids, consuming berries, such as strawberries and blueberries that are high in flavonoids, taking statins, and there are ongoing studies for the use of anti-amyloid therapies for asymptomatic subjects who have proof of amyloid deposition in their brain. In this last slide, I'd like to highlight the role of education in that space. So higher education increases the cognitive reserve of individuals, which may delay the onset of neurocognitive symptoms compared to the burden of the neuropathology in the brain. But once the dementia symptoms start, rapid cognitive decline is actually common. So imagine education as a form of a barrier that blocks the impact of brain pathology on the cognition and delays the onset. But once that barrier is broken, the pathology becomes very impactful on cognitive functions and the decline becomes much more rapid. So to summarize what we've covered so far in this module and share some key points and high yield take home messages, neurocognitive disorders in older adults has an extensive range of differential causes and each underlying cause present with a variety of non-cognitive symptoms such as motor, autonomic, or neuropsychiatric manifestations. There is a significant degree of overlap between these different etiologies, and for several neurodegenerative etiologies, only autopsy can confirm the diagnosis, so clinically we can only make a probable or a possible diagnosis. Learning different syndrome presentations makes a lot of difference in their prognostication and management. For some cases, early detection and prevention is key to a favorable outcome. Careful and systematic diagnostic approach is crucial to narrow down the list of your differential diagnosis. So Alzheimer's disease by far is the most common cause of cognitive impairment in older adults, but it remains a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that you need to rule out other alternate or comorbid causes of cognitive impairment. Depression is a common treatable comorbidity that may also masquerade as dementia, particularly in older adults. While there is no cure for most neurocognitive disorders, patients' caregivers can still benefit from preemptive care planning, symptomatic treatment to decrease the disease burden, and treatments that may slow down the disease progression. Care should always be continuously tailored around what matters most to the patients and their caregivers to attain the best possible quality of life. Now I thank you all for paying attention through this lengthy module and I hope it helps you enough with helping older adults who suffer from cognitive impairment.